So, what is all the buzz about? Well, Donna gave you a little bit of a hint that has to do with the Max Ford Films, which is going to be a motion motion picture film coming out in April 2020. And it will be adapted by the first book, um, Climatized. And there will be three films, and the next one will be adapted by The Beekeeper's Secret. And the third one will be adapted by the book that I come up with. <laughs> so, so Climatized um, comes first. If you were read, I, I did pick up Climatized at the last, and then read The Beast. Did we go in that order? Yeah, I, but I tend to write all of my books. I just finished a mm -hmm. tetralogy, and I tend to write them that they can be read uh, standalone mm -hmm. um, or in sequence. Um, there's enough in each one to give you a little background without being repetitive. Um, but, um, of course, I would say climatize first. <laughs> Go with what's current. So, um, for those of you who haven't read Climatized, it has to do with Max Ford uh, risking her life to save a scientist who has the only information that will actually settle the climate change, uh, climate change debate. And it takes her off to Sarasota, and it takes her to Italy. So you'll get some exposure and learn about some things happening in Italy as well. And um, my writer and producer, one of them, is Noam Dromi, who did Dolphin Tale. So for all you locals, you'll know that. And uh, the other uh, writer-producer is Evan Green, and he is the chief marketing officer for the Grammy Awards. So yes, I do pinch myself and wonder how lucky I got. But uh, they're amazing, the script is amazing, and we've met with local people in Sarasota, including uh, Jeannie Corcoran with the Film Commission, and the attempt is to film as much of the film, all three films, as possible in Sarasota, <laughs> utilizing the Ringling, and hopefully do for Sarasota what Dolphin Tail did for Tampa. So that is, that's our goal. So, but the buzz continues, and this time with The Beekeeper's Secret. And if you follow my novels, uh, I tend to take contemporary political issues and weave them into a fast-paced fictional plot. And The Beekeeper's Secret is just that. But this book was inspired by my publisher, um, David Dunham, two years ago, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And he chose to have the surgery to remove the cancer, but he refused to have radiation and chemotherapy. And he chose alternative medicine. And he looked at different ways and options, and he started with juicing with uh, vegetables, taking enzymes, removing all sugar from his diet, and two years later, the pancreatic cancer was gone. So this has been inspired by David. And in his quest, he kind of uncovered some really eye-opening revelations in searching for different types of cures. And as I further researched, I also discovered that there is a battle brewing between alternative medicine and big pharma. But with a name like the beekeeper's secret, you must be wondering whether it has anything to do with bees. Well, the reader will find out that it's a $700 million industry and that bee pollination contributes to about $15 million billion of the U.S. food production. There, is two, there are 2.6 million hives in the U.S. and there are 40,000 bees per hive so that equates to 104 billion buzzers flying around. Um, bees are also responsible for pollinating over 100 different crops. And for example, there are 800,000 acres of almond groves in California that require 1.68 million hives to allow them to produce 80% of the almond production in the world. But what does this have to do with the story? Well, it starts with a senator dying in the Amazon jungle. And then 4,000 miles away, 
a beekeeper meets his death. And it has something to do with a bee. But that's the beekeeper's secret, so I can't tell you. <laughs> However, somewhere along the line, I invented a cure for cancer. I also uncovered some very disturbing facts. It starts that today, there have been over 100 reported deaths of holistic practitioners and medical doctors. And there's a website known as Health Nut News that's run by a woman named Erin Elizabeth. And every time a doctor or practitioner dies that she feels is somehow shrouded in mystery, she reports it on her site. What I did is I, and in several cases, um, there were doctors that did were entangled with some issue with the FDA or Big Pharma. So what I did is I personally researched heavily over 50 of the doctors and discovered that while some of the deaths could easily be explained, there were about half of them that were questionable. It became clear that there was a battle underway between traditional medicine and alternative medicine. But why? First, we need to know what was involved. Okay, for you teachers out there, this is not a typo, because pharma is actually an acronym for Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, and it's comprised by a large group of pharmaceutical companies. But Big Pharma return, refers to like the top tier, those making the most revenue. And surprisingly, 21 of the top groups of companies have an annual revenue is greater than $10 billion. Today, pharma's drugs worldwide exceed a trillion dollars. They also outspend every other industry in both lobbying efforts and in advertising that saturates all realms of the media. In 2017, the industry spent almost $210 million to support 1,403 lobbyists with 57 million allocated for federal lobbying. Eight million alone was spent in the first quarter, which is up 35% from the year before. There's also evidence that millions of these dollars wash onto the shores of the FDA. And there's sort of an ebb and flow of the profits between the government's Medicare and Medicaid drug plans that go back to Big Pharma. So, what is the FDA really? Well, we know that the Food and Drug Administration is a federal agency under the Health and Human, Resources, Health and Human Services, and that its charter is to promote public health through the control and supervision and production of drugs, tobacco, and food products. But in 2015, taxpayers funded the FDA with $331.6 million. In the same year, Big Pharma funded the FDA with $791.1 million, which means 71% of the FDA is funded by Big Pharma. So it begs the question, who's in charge? Back to the bees. Bee antibiotics used to be over-the-counter drugs, but now, because of the FDA in 2017, they must get a prescription from a, vet, from a veterinarian. And several beekeepers that I've talked to said, what do the vets know about bees? But naturally, you can expect that the cost of those drugs also increased to the benefit of big pharma. So imagine how these similar reg regulations which exist will affect real people with real diseases. To that end, here are some more games that they play. And it's with your health. Since 2013, the price of a 40-year-old off-patent cancer drug in the U.S. has risen 15-fold, putting the life-extending medicines out of the reach of most of the patients. An example of an off-label drug is when Eli Lilly took Prozac off the market due to reported incidents of suicide attributed to the drug. Then they repackaged it and called it Seraphim. 
It sounds a new name is less threatening, and it also sounds more feminine to accommodate all us ladies. The drug is marketed to treat severe PMS instead of depression. You can also be sure, again, that the cost to the consumer is more. And there's more evidence that Big Pharma resorted to this disease kind of mongering, consistent habit for dressing up old pills, giving them new names, to address new societal, oops, new societal issues that they themselves have created. And you can look at the opium epidemic to see why. A few years back, a group of Harvard um, professors conducted a study. And the study was called Institutional Corruption of Pharmaceuticals and the Myth of Safe and Effective Drugs. And according to the, their report, 90% of all new drugs approved by the FDA over the last 30 years have little or no advantage compared to the existing drugs. The report slams the administration for its failure to honestly and ethically approve the new drugs. And as I mentioned, there's an abundance of evidence that while the FDA may approve the drugs, Big Pharma pretty much has the upper hand, giving them control, complete autonomy and control. Why is this so important? Because in 2017, in the US, an estimated 1.7 million new cancer cases were diagnosed. Over 600,000 of those cases resulted in death. During the same time, radiation and chemotherapy drugs produced $100 billion in revenues. Profits are predicted to increase 8% each year going forward. The buybacks and increased dividends for the major drug companies was a major motivator, but it also overshadowed their research development by a significant margin. So it's clear that the reality has become blurred. And therein lies the ultimate question. Unfortunately, there's no definitive way of arriving at an answer. There has been some success in natural products, some of which you'll learn about in The Beekeeper's Secret. But many holistic practitioners and medical doctors using holistic remedies are a threat to big pharma. Absent being able to patent broccoli or natural herbs, it could drain billions of dollars from its coffer. And remember the earlier slide where radiation chemotherapy drugs produced $100 billion in revenue? Imagine if natural curves could replace or allow somebody to avoid radiation and chemotherapy. Where is the monetary incentive to find a cure? It may seem cynical, but in the fine analysis, they may not be able to afford to come up with a cure. So what can we do? Most important, become aware of the eye-opening facts that are already in the public domain as it pertains to healthcare industry. It's also important to note that the intent of the beekeeper's secret is not to discourage the reader from traditional medicine, but to bring awareness to the various alternative medicines available today. First, gather the wealth of information that is already available and then verify. Second, your research will provide you with an excellent resource to engender questions when seeking the right treatment. And third, when it comes to making one's healthcare a second opinion, a second opinion, a third opinion, or a fourth, if necessary, should be sought. It is important to remember that we are the consumer, and those in the medical field are there to serve. The final takeaway is we do not rent our bodies, we own them for life. And you are not, you are what you eat, may sound like a cliche, but it could be a lifesaver. So, be smart, <laughs> get your copy today, and find out the secret. Thank you.